Good afternoon, everybody. So let's get started. Today we will continue and we will start a new topic for those who are following the book. This is chapter 9 of your book, and that is customer relationship management. Last time in this class, we talked about digital marketing and that we discussed on how we can use the digital technologies to identify, anticipate, and satisfy our customers. We looked at different uh, marketing activities that are involved when it comes to digital marketing, and that is uh, activities regarding acquisition of customers, that is how to obtain customers, convention of customers, that is individuals who are potential customers, converting them into actual customers. We want people that visit our websites that are exposed to our brands to actually purchase our offerings. And also, we looked at retention and growth. That is, we're not only, we are not only concerned about acquiring customers, but also we want to keep these customers. Today, we will talk about building relationships with customers. And that, th that is for an obvious reason that to acquire a customer, especially for an online business, is very expensive. That is, to get people to know you about your offerings and to attract them to become your customers can be very expensive in terms of uh, advertising campaigns and other programs aimed at raising awareness of your uh, business. It is estimated that it costs 20% to 30% higher to acquire a customer for an online business compared to a traditional business. But an interesting fact is that once these customers have been acquired, if you are able to retain just 5% more of these customers, then an online uh, company stands a chance of boosting their profits by 25 to 95%. Uh, so the biggest challenge is on acquiring customer. But once you acquire the customer, you have a higher chance for your profits to accelerate compared to traditional uh, businesses. And because of that, in recognition of the fact that it's very expensive to acquire a customer, and that's why most online startups can spend two or even three years before they start becoming profitable. That is because it's expensive to acquire customers. And that's why we want to create long-term relationships with the customers that we are uh, attracting to our customers, the, uh, to our businesses. So this is the, uh, the subject matter of uh, our discussion today. That is customer relationship uh, management, an approach that businesses use to build and sustain long-term business uh, with customers. So as I said, uh, the objective is to acquire customers and to create long-term relationships with those customers that we acquire. Of course, there have been studies that challenge uh, the link or the relationship between customer loyalty and profitability, that there are studies that question whether loyal customers are really profitable. And one of these uh, uh, studies have found that loyal customers are not necessarily uh, cheaper to save, not less price sensitive, or they are not effective at bringing in new businesses. As, uh, as I said last time, a loyal customer is like a partner that uh, continues to stick to you regardless of the temptations that they face uh, uh, outside or other options that they, they could have. So this study is challenging that notion, that it's not necessarily that when you have a loyal customer, then you are likely to uh, increase your profit margins from such customers. However, these studies do not say that loyal customers will lead to negative profits. And that's the, the positive side that we, or an encouragement that why we should stick to uh, building strong relationships with our customers, why we should uh, still 
uh, invest in efforts to create uh, loyal customers. So you will come across uh, articles that uh, question the importance of loyal customers, but as I say, they are, do not point to any empirical evidence as to the negative effect of having uh, loyal customers. Now, because of that, combining uh, both insights that I've just said now, that the cost of acquiring customer is high, but at the same time, there are studies that question whether loyal customers are really profitable. In this class, we will take an approach that takes into account uh, both uh, these perspectives, and that is we will focus on techniques that aim at efforts to initiate and build uh, relationships with customers by using a combination of online and offline techniques. So in this case, we will concern ourselves not only on how to acquire uh, new customers, but also how to build uh, relationships with these customers. So it's both. We are not only focusing on loyal customers or the customers that we already have, but also we are focusing on efforts how to acquire more uh, customers. And this approach uh, will take into account uh, a customer life cycle. That is, we will look from the moment when we select uh, a customer, we the moment when we acquire them, retain and extend. So we will look into different activities that are involved in this uh, cycle. So typically, with this uh, uh, approach, we will start with looking at uh, how we select uh, uh, customers, and that is the, the question of uh, targeting, because we know that we cannot save everyone in the market, so you have to uh, identify. We talked about this last week when we discussed about uh, market segmentation. And also, we will identify the value of different customers uh, that are found within uh, the market, and we will devise ways how we can reach these customers. And then we create a, stra a strategy for acquiring uh, these customers. So we have to identify the right segment that we want to attract, and then find ways how we can capture these uh, uh, customers. And then we will have a, a discussion on how to retain the customers that we acquire. So after obtaining customers, we will also have to devise a strategy on how we, we can keep uh, these customers. And this involves understanding the needs uh, of your customers and continuing to provide them with the offerings that are relevant to, your, uh, to their needs. And finally, we will look into ways on how we can extend uh, these customers or relationships with these customers. And this will involve activities such as resale. Uh, resale is selling more products to those customers. So we don't want customers to buy our products just once, but we will create uh, ways to make sure that they repeat their purchases. But also, we can cross-sell. Cross-sell is introducing new products uh, to customers that have bought uh, from us previously. So over time, we want to extend uh, the category of products that the customers will buy from us. And also, we want to upsell. Uh, upsell is similar to cross-selling, but in this case, you are trying to introduce products that are of higher value. So if someone uh, uh, was buying uh, cheaper products, uh, so you are after, or in the long run, you are trying to introduce pro other products that are of higher uh, value. And also, we, we look into reactivation. That is, over time, some of the customers uh, will become inactive, or they may quit your, your service. You need to find ways to get back those customers. Or they may not buy for quite some time, so you want them to buy much more uh, frequently, and you have to use uh, reactivation techniques to get back these customers. And also, we want refer uh, referrals, referrals in the sense that we want our existing customers to recommend our, our, our products. So, so we want to get our customers uh, recommend to other customers so, they so that they can bring more uh, business uh, 
to our to our company. We will discuss about uh, uh, customer relationship uh, systems and these uh, software programs that are used uh, by companies that want to manage interactions with their uh, existing and potential uh, customers. So basically, it's a, the use of technology to, to, to organize, to, to automate, and synchronize sales, marketing, customer service, and technical uh, support. If you are, I may explain it in a very uh, simple approach. A customer relations, uh, relationship management system consists of key, uh, three key elements. So you have your, your customers and all that you want, you want to acquire information from these customers. This information is saved, say, in a data warehouse so that we can retrieve the information for different applications, whether it could be customer service, marketing, campaigns, or any other activity. So we want to acquire, and all this aim at improving service to the customers. So we will, it's a system that helps you to capture data about your, your customers, and this uh, data is kept in your systems so that you can retrieve the information for different applications in order to enhance the quality of service that you are providing to your, to your customers. And these uh, systems are of different types, and there are different uh, vendors. They can be used for organizations of uh, different types, from ranging from large organizations to small organizations. For a small organization, typically it could be a system for maintaining basically information, uh, uh, contact information about your, your, your customers. But for large organization, uh, the customer relationship management system can be uh, quite complex. So this is a, a, a sort of illustration on how uh, it works. So you, you have uh, customers and you are collecting data about these customers, which eventually are used to, to save these customers. There are different functions uh, of uh, customer relationship management uh, systems or applications, and these are just uh, some of them. You can use it uh, to automate uh, sales. So for instance, you can use this software uh, to track and arrange the customer visits, and this is uh, for sales representatives. You can also use for managing customer uh, service management. That is, people that are sitting uh, in customer uh, con contact centers or customer service uh, centers can use to track information about the customers that are as, uh, asking for service. So when people, say, make a call uh, to a customer service center, this system can facilitate uh, people that are sitting at the customer service to retrieve various information about those uh, customers, whether it's their past purchase history, uh, their information like purchase behavior, their preferences, and other information that can be relevant in saving these uh, customers. It can also be used uh, to, to manage uh, sales uh, processes, and these can be integrated with other uh, application systems uh, within an organization, say uh, accounting, where you can use it to, to build a history about your, uh, your customer. And all this is aimed at getting a base for improving the service that we offer to these customers. And also, you can use it uh, for campaign management. For instance, these days, uh, customer relationship management systems uh, can be integrated to different networks in the, on the internet. And that can be quite useful when it comes to management of uh, your campaigns. For instance, uh, measuring 
uh, or assessing the, the impact of a certain online campaign that you have uh, launched. And this is relates to, to the analysis uh, role of marketing, uh, customer relationship management system of applications. Now, with reference uh, to, to, to our uh, subject, that is digital uh, business management, we'll be more concerned about electronic customer relationship uh, management. So our focus will be mostly on how we can apply digital technologies to acquire and retain uh, customers by improving their uh, knowledge, targeting, service delivery, and satisfaction. So put it in very simple terms is we will be concerned on how we can apply digital technologies in building relationships with our customers. But this starts with how we can acquire these customers and create long-term relationship uh, with these uh, customers. Now, today we all recognize uh, the importance of uh, social media uh, networks. They have become increasingly important in the uh, business uh, landscape. And because of that, there's, there is an increasing uh, emphasis on the role of uh, social media uh, ne networks and this has led to a shift of what is called social uh, customer relationship management that is the process of managing customer to customer conversation to engage existing customers prospects and other stakeholders with a brand and so to enhance customer relationship management so the goal with social uh, customer relationship management is to use the social media uh, networks to initiate and sustain relationship with our uh, customers. So this ranges from all sorts of uh, social uh, media networks, but the leading ones being uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and it could also be uh, online uh, brand communities that you either create yourself or your customers uh, create. But the overall uh, idea is to use these social uh, media platforms to initiate and strengthen the relationship that we have with our uh, customers. So are there any benefits uh, of engaging in uh, electronic customer relationship management? The answer is yes, because that's where we find our customers today and it's important that we, uh, we have uh, an approach a very clear approach to initiating and uh, establishing and strengthening the relationship we have with our customers. So here are some of the benefits that we, you, an organization uh, can have by engaging in electronic customer relationship management. The first one is reduce costs to targeting of customers. If you can think of, an, of a traditional uh, approach to targeting customers, if an organization, say for instance, want to target uh, individuals with a certain income level, one approach would be to identify, say, postcodes of certain geographical areas. Because we know in, in many countries, income level can determine where you, you are living. That may not be so much the case in Norway, but in many other countries, affluent people would be living in a certain uh, section of a town or region or country, and poor people will be somewhere else. So if you, you are targeting people with a certain income level, then easily you can identify a postcode code and target your marketing campaign to those areas. But the problem is, even in those areas that you are targeting, say among the, uh, the affluent people, usually people have different preferences. So you may send your uh, campaign uh, to an area where the response rate might be very low simply because the people that you're targeting do not have interest with your products. But the internet has changed the game. With the internet, it's possible to target people that have, that have shown interest to your products. For instance, we can target behavior uh, of uh, individuals by tracking their activities, say, in online, uh, social uh, media networks or by tracking their behavior when they visit our website and identify whether these people are, could be potential customers for our business 
or not. So this is much more e effective uh, as opposed to uh, traditional approaches to targeting people. Here we can target people that are more relevant for your, for your business. But also we can achieve mass uh, customization of the marketing messages. With the digital technologies, it's very easy to customize or to tailor marketing messages to that are relevant to individual uh, customers. For instance, when Facebook are displaying an ad uh, to you, usually they try to display an ad that is relevant to you. And that is based on your age, could be your ma marital status, your activity on Facebook, the pages that you like, whatever information that you have provided to them, they can use it to display relevant information to you. So they do not simply show any ad to anyone. They try to show ads that are relevant. And this applies to most uh, uh, of the approaches that are used in electronic customer relationship management, that we tailor uh, the messages to appear uh, appealing and relevant to the customers that we, we target. But also this uh, has an advantage in increasing the depth, breadth, and nature of relationship. That is, through the internet, we can interact much more frequent with our uh, customers. It's much easier to create and to strengthen the relationship we, are, we have with the uh, customers. It's easy for customers to, to contact you in case of uh, anything. For instance, these days most companies have a chat service. So it's quite easy if you have a, your encountering a problem with the a service, you can easily initiate a chat and someone will talk to you. You can make a call. There are so many ways that we can interact with customers uh, uh, today. And all this help to contrib uh, contribute to building strong relationship uh, between uh, companies and their customers. But also, it's possible to achieve uh, learning over time that through interaction on the internet is easier for companies to learn more about you, to know who you are, to know your preferences. And over time, they can tailor products that are more relevant uh, to, you, to you as a customer. And all this help to reduce uh, uh, the, the cost of marketing and the cost of engaging with uh, customers. So now we will uh, look at uh, how companies can engage uh, with uh, customers, and that is uh, customer engagement uh, strategy. And the reason that we want to first concentrate on this is we all understand that today uh, customers are facing a lot of uh, distractions. We have uh, offerings coming from all uh, directions, and we have so many things that we uh, we can look at. We have so people are so busy, which means to get attention of a customer can be quite uh, uh, difficult. And that is getting someone to think about your company, to think about your products can be uh, quite uh, difficult. But we want to build a brand or a business where customers can think about our products. So whenever someone think about buying a particular product, then your business should come first to their, to their mind. They say in 1971, an average customer was exposed to about 500 marketing messages a day. And that is uh, whether in the streets that you're working, whether you're walking, whether in the newspapers, on the television. Over, on average, this was the amount of messages that uh, customers were exposed to. What about today? With the advent of the web and, other, uh, and the, uh, the uh, online media channels, this number has increased. That people are exposed, are bombarded to so many uh, marketing messages. And what does this mean? To, an, to a business, this means that you need to have a very powerful strategy to get across all these messages so that people can see you. It's very difficult for customers to notice your business in the midst of all this crowd and distractions. So you want to create a business strategy where your business can be visible, where people can easily think about your, your, your products. 
So what is a uh, customer engagement strategy? So this is all about repeated, well, repeated interactions that aim at strengthening the emotional, psychological, and physical investment a customer has in a, in a brand. So you want to engage your customer. You want your customers to get involved uh, to your, uh, with your business or your, your brand or products emotionally, psychologically, and this will lead to them investing in your, in your products or in your, in your brand. As competition uh, becomes tense, uh, is, I increases, it's very important to, to engage your customers. And such engagement helps customers to keep your, either your brand or your products in their minds. And that is what uh, you want, that whenever people think about a, a certain product category, you want your products to be on top of their, of their minds. And that can be achieved by engaging uh, with these customers. However, as we discussed when we talked about uh, environmental factors affecting uh, a business, we talked about legal issues. It is important that you need to consider consent of your customers. Although we want to engage customers, it's important that you also ask for their permission. That is, they should engage, interact with your business out of their consent. And this is what we call uh, permission uh, marketing. That is, customers should agree themselves to be involved uh, with your uh, organization marketing uh, activities. But as I said, customers get offerings from all directions. How do you get a customer to accept, to get, in, to get uh, interacting with you, or to get engaged uh, with your business? And that's where the concept of uh, incentive comes in. As I said, there are two main ways you can get people to do stuff, either carrots or punishment. But in, in business, you cannot punish a, a customer. You want to give them carrots, and that is incentive. Incentive is a benefit that you are offering uh, to a customer in order to engage with your, with your business. So in order for customers to accept, and that is to offer their consent uh, to, to, to engage with, with your customer, you need to give them something uh, in, in exchange. We will see this as we discuss on how you can get a customer uh, subscribe, say, to your web page or uh, sign up with their email account so that you can communicate uh, with them. Somebody uh, going in 1999 equated engaging with a customer as equivalent to dating someone. That in order to get someone to be your partner, you need uh, to show them a reason why you, are, uh, you, you could be a good partner uh, to them. But in order to do that, you need to have a space for interaction uh, with them, that you need to interact with them so that they can know that you are the right uh, partner for them. And this applies to, to business, that you need to create an environment where customers can trust you, customers uh, can know that you are the right uh, business for the, for the products they are looking for. You are the right partner in terms of customer uh, service provider uh, relationship. And here are some of the guidelines that he offered in order to create relationship with a customer. And that is, first, you should start by offering uh, a prospect an incentive to volunteer. That is, offer them a sort of benefit. Uh, and I'm sure you have come across this uh, so many times. For instance, uh, say a media publisher or a newspaper, online newspaper, can ask you to sign up and you can get, say, three articles for free in a week. Or they can ask you to subscribe to their services and you can re read their news, say, for one month for free. So this is a sort of incentive. It's a benefit that you give uh, to someone so that you can hook them up. You can attract them to your, to your service. And once these people have uh, accepted to give their attention to you, that someone, say, has subscribed for one month for free, then you want to engage them. You want to inform them more about you, that 
showing your, your offerings. And this is the moment that you have to attract, capture their attention and attract uh, to your business, to give them a reason why they should stick to you even after that one month of uh, subscription. And you, have to, you want to reinforce these incentives that giving them uh, more benefits so that they can uh, stick to you. And hopefully, over time, they will get to know more about you and you can convince them uh, to stick to you even after uh, those benefits have uh, expired. So this is uh, uh, a summary of uh, how you can effectively uh, uh, build a relationship with, uh, uh, with customers. So first and foremost, you need to attract customers to your website. So in order to uh, create a relationship with these uh, customers online, first they have to be on your website. So we will discuss about how to conduct online campaigns later on. But here simply we are saying uh, first you, you get someone that is not on your website to visit your uh, website. And that is driving traffic to your, to your site. After someone has visited your site, you want to give them incentive uh, as a, the example I have given. Say subscription and then they get something in, in return for that. And that is a sort of uh, incentive. When someone has accepted to give, say, to sign up with their email uh, address, then you want to engage uh, these customers by communicating with them, say, sending uh, emails, in informing them more about your, your, your business. So you start communicating uh, with, with these uh, prospects. And whatever information they have provided is kept in the database. Now, the range of information that they will provide will differ from customer to customer. You could ask barely for just an email address, or you could ask for uh, their preferences and other more details that can help you to identify what kind of uh, customers they might. But you have to be careful. If you are asking for all this information upfront, people might become skeptical. So you have to take it slowly. That the longer the relationship, the more information you, you can ask. So in the beginning, you just ask for the basic information, say email address, just to keep uh, the relationship going on. And other information can be provided uh, later as the relationship develops. So after initiating uh, the, the, the relationship, then you continue to communicate to them, providing them with specific offers. And this should be uh, a continuous process. So this leads us to uh, customer profiling. And that's uh, basically what I've been uh, discussing. And that is the information that the customers will, will provide uh, to you. Usually, it will be you will start with an email address. But the most important information that you, you want to obtain in the end is what we call a qualified lead. A qualified lead is not only the contact information, but also other information that will help you to uh, profile the customers, that to know their preferences, what kind of offerings you can provide to them. And that could be age, their gender. You can ask for their pre what they would like, and other, any other information that can be uh, relevant in providing a, a particular offering to those uh, customers. Again. For customers to provide all this information, because some of these are sensitive information. So you cannot just ask people about their age, their marital status, and so on and so forth. You, you ha it takes some time, and they have to trust you. So some of this information will be provided in the long run. But this is the kind of information that you would like in order to know more about the customer and provide the specific offerings uh, to them. So here are some of the uh, uh, guidelines on uh, a, a sort of uh, framework that you, you can use to effectively form and build uh, online relationships. And it comprises of four stages. The first one is customer identification, pretty much what we have been uh, discussing, that you, are, you, are, you have to identify a customer. And this involves 
each time they, they, they visit your website and all the other times that they will visit your website, you have to know what kind of customers, you have to track their behavior. And luckily, these days, there are so many tools for tracking the uh, behavior of the customers on, on our sites. And then you want to differentiate your customer because one size cannot fit uh, everyone, which means you need to customize your service uh, depending on the needs of customers. So you have to differentiate uh, the different uh, customers and that is based on the profiles of the customers that you have uh, developed. And then you want to uh, interact uh, with these uh, customers, whether uh, on site or even offline, depending on what information you have about them and how willing they are to interact with your uh, business. And finally, you have to uh, customize, that is to personalize the whatever communications that you will have with this uh, customer. Most customers would feel uh, very uh, happy when they know that the message they have received is very specific, is very customized to them. So we will look at uh, convention marketing, and that is not only that we want to get uh, uh, customers onto our website, but we want to convey uh, potential customers into actual customers, that people who are not only visiting our website, but they want them to actually buy uh, products from our website. And convention uh, marketing is uh, what we say transformation of uh, uh, potential customers into actual customers. And this can take different stages, can involve different stages for an online uh, business. So it may uh, range from converting web browsers, people who are that randomly searching the internet into v site visitors, because we know that people are exposed to millions of uh, uh, web pages and we want to convey them to our, our site in the sense that you want these customers, instead of uh, visiting other websites, you want to, them to visit your, your site. And that is convention of web browsers to site visitors. And then you want to convey the site vi visitors to visitors who stay on the site and progress beyond the homepage. So we don't want people that can just open our homepage and leave uh, the site, we will talk about uh, bounce rate uh, later on. And there are tools for tracking the bounce rate, this, that, how many people just open your website and they leave. So we want customers that will visit our website and they will continue to other pages within uh, the website. And then we want to engage these uh, visitors into prospects, that customers that can potentially uh, individuals that can potentially buy from our uh, from our business, and these potential customers eventually into customers, and from customers that have bought once, we want them to repeat their purchases. So this is a process and requires a, a management approach. Always at the beginning, uh, at the top, you will have so many individuals. Sorry say people that will visit your website, but not all of these uh, will turn into customers. So we want to create a, a system that can help convey these individuals that visit our website to eventually become actual uh, customers. And this is a framework uh, showing how you can implement uh, effective convention uh, marketing. There are four main activities that you should uh, engage with. First is to reach. That Before you can attract someone to your website, you need to reach them. You need to expose them to the message about your, uh, your business or your website. And there are several uh, key performance indicators that you, you can use to measure how successful you have been at reaching individuals. That is in raising awareness about your business to the target audience. So you, you have a target audience that you would like them to know about your business and you want them to become aware of that business. And here are some of the key performance indicators that is you can use to assess how successful you have been. 
And this could be the number of unique vis uh, visitors and fans of your uh, website, audience share, revenue uh, that you have uh, generated over time. So it could be a number of uh, key performance indicators, but uh, the aim is to measure how uh, successful you have been in raising awareness about your uh, business or your products. And then you want to act, and that is engaging the, the audience, the individuals that you have been able to reach uh, in the first stage. And here also you, you have uh, different key performance in indicators. For instance, uh, the bounce rate that I just uh, mentioned. You can assess how many people visit your website and leave immediately and how many proceed to other uh, pages uh, uh, as well. And then out of those that visit, you want to convert them into uh, customers. So you want to measure how, how many of those that visit your website eventually say show interest to your products or even purchase, depending on which measures you are, uh, you are looking for. Least uh, the interest that customers uh, express on your products, but also you can measure in terms of uh, actual purchases uh, the visitors eventually make. And finally, you engage, and this is building relationship with your customers. And as it appears uh, on the slide, this should be a continuous uh, process that you will continuously try to raise awareness of your uh, business, that we want as many customers as possible to, to be aware of our uh, businesses. And also we know that in the process we will lose some of the customers. Some customers will stop buying from us, which means you have to continuously create uh, new customers while trying to maintain uh, the customers that you have obtained. But in order to understand uh, and Im implement uh, this uh, process I've just discussed about, you need also to, uh, to be aware of the online buying process, that the process that customers follow when it comes to buying your products. And by understanding the online buying process, you will be able to implement different stage, uh, strategies at different stage that is involved uh, in the uh, online process. First and foremost, you need to understand different types of uh, individuals or potential customers that your, your business is uh, facing. And here we have a, a, a simplified classification of uh, five types of uh, customers that you are likely to interact with. First, we have directed information uh, seekers, and these are people that are searching the, the web in order to obtain uh, information. In most uh, cases, these tend to be quite experienced uh, uh, users and they know what they are, they are doing. Secondly, you have an undirected information seekers. These tend to be new uh, novice or new users uh, of the web, which is not so much the case today because so many people today have become experienced uh, users. Uh, of the, the web, but these are <coughs> those individuals that um, would uh, click whatever hyperlinks they find on the on the web, and they are very likely, based on research, that these type of people are very likely to click uh, banner ads, uh, ad base, because they are actually not looking for any specific uh, information, as opposed to the first group that know exactly what they are looking for, and they are looking for a specific information. And then you have directed buyers, that are individuals who know what they want to, to buy and they are looking for specific products uh, on the web. And then you have bargain hunters, people that are searching in the in internet to find offers from different uh, providers. And then you, are, you have entertainment uh, seekers, that individuals that are using the net for the purpose of uh, uh, entertainment. And this means that in order to engage uh, your customers, you need to know what kind of customers are you uh, targeting and how you can engage these uh, customers. Today there is an increasing uh, popularity of uh, the concept of gamification, and that is application of game, uh, game elements in non-game context that 
businesses try to use uh, game, if, uh, game elements like awarding people uh, points, uh, letting people uh, interact with certain uh, activities and give them, say, credits for what they are doing, whatever game elements that you would like to, to, uh, to, to apply as a way of entertaining, but at the same time engaging uh, the customers into your, uh, your business. So you need to understand these different types of uh, customers in order to create a strategy for interacting with them. So it's 3 o'clock. I think we can take a break and continue after. <laughs>